Hello, and welcome to Attack of the Awesome Interviews. I'm your host, Mike. All along with me is my fellow hosts, Chris and Susie. Hey, howdy, hey, yeah. howdy, hey. So this interview, we're, we've been waiting for four months, and we finally get to do it now. Knock on <laughs> wood <laughs> without any difficulties. Uh, so you guys are ready for our original first guest, who is now our third guest? Yes. I've been waiting a long time to do this, so I'm very glad to be doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have prepared a intro that is a parody of Brett's favorite introduction of a TV show. <clears throat> Eat. <clears throat> <clears throat> Hold on, let me get Brad Jones. Popular, young handsome with a sexy deep voice, a man with the brightest of futures, a man with the darkest of pasts, from Weasel's Rip My Flesh to Superman the 1975 musical. His reviews of exploitation films and the world's craziest pornography is viewed by his adoring fans from all over the world. Brad Jones, master of reviews that divide man from porn, porn for man, <laughs> the cinema snob. The divide man God. from board. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> a board with the darkest of pasts. <laughs> I thought you would like that. <laughs> I do. Very much. Awesome. <laughs> Got a new intro to the cinema snob. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> Move over, greatest American hero. <laughs> it's going right up the window. <laughs> and that is on the so that song went through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. A lot has a lot has changed since we uh, last talked and tried the recording this interview. Uh, this time we got a new segment on this interview called uh, "Ask That Character." We uh, ask questions to you, and you answer in character. Oh, okay. <laughs> so first, we need to bring out the cinema snob to answer questions to. Got it. Are we talking to the cinema snob? I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> well, well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Mr. Snob. And um, we've got a, a few questions to ask you. If you'd be willing to uh, answer them for us. As long as I'm not watching more vag talk porn, I'm fine. Awesome. We'll try. N we'll try not to put you through that. Uh, now I'll, s I'll start off the list of questions for you. So, uh, where exactly did you disappear to when the nostalgia critic kicked you out of Cassia? I was in Reno. I got laid. It was about time. No one else in Cassia was putting out. <laughs> <What's up? laughs> All right, uh, I'll do the next question. Uh, how much alcohol was involved before you decided to do old school porn reviews? A full bottle of clinker brick wine will will make you hard at the hairiest of Sasquatch porn. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I got the next question for you, Mr. Snob. How come you don't make a film sequel to Caligula? Because there already is one. It's called Caligula 2, Messalita, Messalita, and I'm sure it's a freaking masterpiece. <laughs> okay. Good to know. Yep. Can't, can't argue with that. And uh, what's the worst porn spoof you've seen so far? The worst porn spoof I've seen so far. <clears throat> Super Horneo Brothers. They couldn't even get the names of the video game characters right. Half, ex half expected Zelda to turn up, and it's actually the guy from Vice Project Doom. <laughs> uh, why do you always do your reviews in bare feet? <clears throat> Just think. Just so I don't get cold feet when watching one of these terrible movies. 
can't argue with that logic. Um, <laughs> now this is this is an interesting one for you. How many times would you say you've cleaned that gun of yours? And you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Clearly, I never cleaned that gun because when I pointed the gun at the floor and accidentally hit Phalus in Canada, there is something wrong with the sighting on that gun. <laughs> <laughs> apparently, it goes, apparently, it shoots really far for a Red Rider BB gun. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Not uh, at all disturbed. What on earth? Is <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Sorry, at all man. disturbed for that, no. <laughs> nope, not at all. Okay, here's a good one. Oh, staying on the subject of porn. What on earth possessed you to watch Super Horny of Brothers 2 when we all saw what you thought of the first movie? Because I just had to find out how the story ended. <laughs> okay. There was a story? <laughs> yeah, what story? <laughs> Alright, uh, if you were personally asked to direct a remake of one of the god-awful movies you reviewed, which one would you direct, and what sort of changes would you make from the original movie? Hmm. Oh, well, of course I'd... <laughs> I'd remake Caligula, because at least, you know, I could have my porn on the set and then film it, too. <laughs> <laughs> what, ch what, changes, what changes would I make? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, if only that movie could be less tasteful. <laughs> uh <-oh. laughs> Interesting choice. Exactly. All right, let's see. Yeah. Uh, which video game do you think would make a great porn movie, and would you star in it? <clears throat> if the script calls for me to sit in my chair and make fun of it, yes, I, I would star in it. Uh, <clears throat> they could make a video game out of uh, bubble bath girls. All they need is a shower, a naked girl, and a bunch of blocks. <laughs> shouldn't, be hard, shouldn't be hard to mess that up. <laughs> yeah. Now I have to say I totally agreed with your top moment of 2010 being from Nudist Colony of the Dead, as that song is surprisingly catchy. Now, were there any songs of the Superman in 1975 musical that you found yourself singing in the shower? Uh, oddly enough, uh, not really. I find myself in the shower singing the freaking cock-a-doodle-doo song from Chatterbox, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised because that movie's very disturbing. It just sticks in your mind. Yeah. <laughs> my, penis likes to, my penis likes to sing along with it. <laughs> <laughs> what would be one of the nightmares of yours that Freddy Krueger would use to kill you? You just show me Nightmare on Elm Street Five, the dream, the dream child. <laughs> you know, you follow it up with Freddy's dead. I'll just finish the job myself. <laughs> uh, would you ever agree to do a Micronation conquest again? <laughs> Sure, but only if it's Pitoria from Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> Good one. Uh, now, what would you do during a zombie invasion? Uh, uh, find the nearest Ken Foray and hide in a shopping mall. <laughs> As any sane person would do. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd go to Vegas. Uh, how would you? How would you escape a jigsaw trap? <clears throat> um, escape a jigsaw trap. I'd slice my own wrist, that way my face isn't pulled apart. That way I'm dead before my face is pulled apart by the reverse bear trap. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, don't know if that counts, but okay. 
<laughs> Something's getting ripped you, off, so it counts. Have you seen me? There's no way. Have you seen me? There's, there's no way I'm escaping that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't just cut off your foot to get the key? <laughs> I wouldn't cut off my whole foot. If I had to cut anything off, I'd just cut off a piece of the heel. <laughs> I could slip through that chain just the same. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, Harry Elway isn't as smart as you. <laughs> and he's a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> he's got degrees and shit. <laughs> and if you've if you've seen the ending of Saw 3D, no, he's not smart. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <sighs> uh, the next question is, oddly enough, did you ever meet 90s kid? <laughs> no, but that jackass who gave me the Coke 2 apparently did in character limbo heaven. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Awesome. That's it for questions for the snob. Now we need to uh, ask questions for Kung Tai Ted. Mm hmm. He's here. Woohoo! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> yes. All right. Snook, I snook in without you noticing. <laughs> you are very good, sir, at snooking into a room. <laughs> we didn't hear you come in. <laughs> anyway, I have a question for you, Mr. Ted. Any kung fu moves from kung fu movies that we can use if we were in a fight with someone? Best use the old kung fu movies and not the recent ones, because if you use the recent kung fu movies, you might be under the impression that CGI will help you out, or a tiny wire that doesn't show up on camera. <laughs> that, that, that makes much sense. <laughs> oh, dear. I don't think we could have gotten a more perfect response. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> that was perfect. <clears throat> now, uh... Kung Tai Ted, there was an English dubbed Japanese TV show which was broadcast in the, U in the UK in the 1970s called Monkey, or in Japanese Sayuki. Would you consider reviewing some episodes from this remarkable TV show? Of course I would, but only if it's more classy than the cinema snob episode of Monkey with 72 Magic. Word has it a guy gets pissed on his head in that movie. And I'm not exactly sure how to do that move, without, but with still keeping my dignity. Okay, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> All right. How did Master Cup Dojo come to be your arch enemy? I still don't know how that argument came about, but he does have some fine moves, such as tra transporting me to Tokyo, Nebraska, and leaving and leaving me there to walk home over the course of three months. He's kind of an asshole like that. <laughs> he is a bit of a douche. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What training did you receive to become the Kung Tai Ted we know and love? I watched every episode of The Master with Lee Van Cleef, especially the one that, that guest starred George Lazen me. Mm. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Thank you. Now, here's a question for you. If Jean-Claude Van Damme, Chuck Norris, Steven Seagal, Bruce Lee, and Jackie Chan were in a film together, what would you call it and would you go and see it? I would call it 90s, the movie. And yes, I would see it. Oh, God, I nearly, I nearly choked to death there. <laughs> I like that 90s, the movie. They need to make that. <laughs> uh, last question is, what weapon would you use against a super black predator from Predators? Mm. I would... It wouldn't really matter because they didn't make it off of that planet anyway. I could use a stick or a gun. It doesn't matter. I'm still stranded in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> All right. Uh, I was expecting roundhouse kick. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That is it 
for questions. Completed, anyway. Oh. Yep. Uh, <laughs> now we <clears throat> now we got a few questions for uh, Vic. Got it. Three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know, it's, it's, we didn't think of a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm here. What do you need? I got all sorts of boxes. Big ones, small ones. What is your favorite big box that you have? <clears throat> I particularly like the big box of Deep Throat, because it goes down real smooth. That is, if you could take all 70 minutes of it. <laughs> okay. Okay, good to know. Uh, any other big boxes that you have worth talking about in future episodes? In future episodes, I can do the movie uh, Never Let Go, Stan Peter Sellers, basically as me, Vic Delio. If you could picture me crush, if you could picture me crushing a guy's fingers inside of a desk. I can surprise him. Okay. Okay, I'll be. <laughs> Uh, last question is, uh, wow, the big box model is smoking hot. Damn! Where did you uh, find her, and how did you two meet? That's my sister you're talking about, you asshole. We nail each other all the time. I was like, what? I bet you do. Was that in poor taste? No. <laughs> of course not. All right, that is it for questions for Vic. Uh, now, now the last character that we need to talk to is, of course, 80s Dan. Got it. Well, <laughs> the future. Yay. The future. Oh, my God. Welcome to the show, 80s Dan. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> now we've got a Let few questions. Let me be questions. the first to welcome you to 2011. <laughs> 2011, oh my god, we've got four more years to make 15 more Jaws movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot of stuff you're going to be uh, seeing coming out. A whole lot of crap. <laughs> now, uh, are you going to have your own show where you review anything 80s, like 80s movies, TV shows, music, fads, fashion, etc.? I'll be doing my own show coming up soon. We'll be talking about plenty of 80s stuff, like certain VHS movies, certain video game accessories, pretty much anything 80s. Awesome. Except for Strawberry Shortcake. I don't really like that show. No, it's shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this question is really interesting. I want to know. Uh, what's your calling for you to peer? Is it opening a can slash bottle of new Coke or a Coke 2 or maybe like a certain 80s song? Or is it just anything okay. 80s that, you, that we okay. mentioned to make you peer? Apparently it's opening a bottle of new Coke, but I happen to think that that was written in there just for convenience. <laughs> just for product placement. Damn. <laughs> I had to pick up on my endorsements. <laughs> I had to come back somehow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> okay. So what is your favorite aspect of the 80s? My favorite aspect of the 80s? The fact that the word 80s is in my name. <laughs> <laughs> Can't see anything fairer than that. <laughs> Where exactly did you come from? Is it another dimension consisting entirely of everything related to the 80s? Word on the street is I came from the fact that uh, some guy named the Cinema Snob needed filler in his Caligula video. But other than that, I essentially came from character limbo heaven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got a few characters in there. Yeah, where many good characters go to die. Or born. I said hi. <laughs> yep. <laughs> now, uh, 80s Dan, if there was any other decade that you could choose to come from, which one would it be? The 1880s, because it's still technically the 80s. 
<laughs> why, why was I expecting that answer? <laughs> in, in hindsight, that seems like a foolish question. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Just like asking the uh, 80s Dan loads of questions, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. He's from uh, my era. Now we need to bring out the character of Brad Jones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Break out of character. Yeah, could Got you bring it. us Brad Jones, please? We'd like to talk to him. Sure, sure, sure. I'm here. <laughs> no, no, go away, Snob. We want Brad Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so, sometimes, sometimes they're the exact same person. <laughs> Um, wow. uh, okay. All right. I guess I'll start off the questions for you, Brad. Um, how did the cinema snob come about? Oh, I had a lot of free time. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, what happened was, uh, I this was about three and a half years ago, I guess. Um, I was working a job. I was working at the local newspaper about five days out of the week, but I was really only there for about three hours out of the day. So, uh, so yeah, I, I honestly didn't have a lot, of, a lot of free time, and uh, uh, I wanted to. I, I, I was, I directed some exploitation movies, um, about three at that point. I, did, I directed three exploitation movies, and nothing was really happening there. So, uh, I had an idea to maybe do some, it, some comedic internet reviewing because I had done comedic articles uh on movies uh so no one had really done the exploitation market so i wanted to do something with exploitation films that and i'm i genuinely love exploitation movies it's kind of my thing anyway uh and as for as for what the character came from uh definitely inspired off of uh um roger ebert uh reviewing Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter, which you can see on YouTube, it's it's very funny. I mean, he just goes ballistic on the thing, uh, as if it's the and the doomsday of cinema. Um, <laughs> so it came from that, and, and also a little bit from like uh, local film snobs here in town, uh, but mostly from that Roger Ebert review. So I shot. A uh, handful of episodes, put them on the site, and some people liked them. So I, I just, I just kept doing it. Like I said, I, I had plenty of free time, so it, it started out as a lark, and now uh, it's what I do full time. Mm. Interesting. <clears throat> that's what, that's what we're all hoping for to happen to us. That's for sure. Exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, where can we find Crystal Pepsi online that isn't diet? Uh, eBay. Um, obviously, like, di un unfortunately, diet is, for some reason, the easiest to find. Um, but a regular Crystal Pepsi does show up on eBay from time to time. It certainly shows up a lot more frequent than, uh, than really most discontinued sodas. Because uh, stuff like New Coke, stuff like Coke 2, even though they were out for a long time, um, they don't show up on eBay that much. Whereas Crystal Pepsi, I mean, that was out for roughly about six months. It was a very mass-produced product. There was a lot left over. So yeah, you can still find Chris. You can still find Crystal Pepsi on eBay. You just you just have to check in like every few days. <laughs> but don't get the diet. <laughs> <laughs> no diet sucks. <clears throat> yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, any thoughts on the director chosen to direct the new Godzilla film? Uh, apparently his name's Gareth Edwards and he previously directed Monsters. Oh, he's I haven't seen Monsters. I've heard it's I've heard it's really good. Um I have no problems with them doing another Godzilla movie. Um you know, as long as it's entertaining, as long as it's it feels like a Godzilla movie. You know, that's fine. As long as Roland Emmerich isn't directing it, I'd say. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing about that movie is, sadly enough, I actually think that's one of his better movies. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it is, definitely. Uh, 
the biggest pr- the biggest problem with that American Godzilla, the one from the late nineties, the biggest problem with it is just the fact that it's called Godzilla. If it was called anything else, I mean, if it was Christ, if it was called Reptile or Monster or whatever, that movie wouldn't have gotten as much flack as it's gotten. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. it's called Godzilla, so you compare it to a Godzilla movie, and it's not a Godzilla movie. As a movie, as a movie about a monster that's attacking New York City. It's a movie about a monster that's attacking New York City. I mean, it is what it is. It's it's hmm. it's fairly entertaining. It's not uh, terrible, but it's just not a Godzilla movie. Yeah. I think they should have called that movie New York Go Boom. New York and Dana Hoy. Yeah. All right. Um, the next question for you is... Uh, how would you rank the Saw films from good to bad? Uh, I'd say the best one is probably the first one. Um, mm. The worst is 3D. Um, let's see. I would go probably 1, 3, 2, 4, 6, 5, and then 3D. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'd agree with that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are your thoughts on Scream 4 so far? I could give two craps about that. I couldn't stand the Scream movies to begin with. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm going to see it for the website, but I could care less about another Scream movie. <laughs> Kevin Williamson could go to – Kevin Williamson can go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't agree more. It's also, scary movie five. Oh God! <laughs> I didn't even. I didn't even. See, I didn't even see scary movie four. So I. I I doubt I'll I probably did. go see five. <laughs> you didn't miss much. <laughs> uh, no, it was like a pot without like a manhole cover at Little John, and that's about the funniest part of the movie. Oh yeah. Just like horror films, incorporate yeah. the jet. What? <laughs> yeah, he's like he's got a car, and like they want the car, so they throw a manhole cover at him, and they take the car. Okay. Ridiculous. It's like I'm, it's like I'm gonna call my spoof movie epic movie, yet I'm gonna reference Nacho Libre. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, this is epic movie released. What are you talking about? This is an epic movie they spoofed. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and uh, now, what's your opinion on uh, Highlander and the franchise it spawned? The Highlander franchise? Yeah. Um, well, the first one's a classic. I love the first one. And I just like Christopher Lambert. Um, yeah. He's one, of those, he's one of those actors who, I don't know if he's a good actor, but he's a unique actor. There's no one like him. There's no one who deliver no one else who delivers their lines like that. Yes, yeah. come on. It's the voice. Take my hands. Come on. Um, <laughs> there's no one else really like that, you know. So I mean, he's entertaining. As for the Highlander movies, um, the first one's legitimately awesome. The first one's great. I mean, it, it's just a classic. The second one, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll give this about the second one. It's not boring. The second one's not boring. It has its entertainment value. Between Michael Ironside and uh, Johnny uh, Johnny C. McGinley. <laughs> oh, I've had enough of you. Um, you know, there is enter- there is certainly entertainment value there. I mean, it's a, it's a terrible movie. It's it's you know kind of throws a wrench into the continuity, but whatever. Um, <laughs> Part three, honestly, I don't remember that much about. I, part three, I saw when it hit video, when it first hit video. Um, I don't remember hating it, but I haven't seen it since then, so I don't remember that much about it. Uh, as for Highlander Endgame, uh, I never liked the show, so I could have cared less that they brought Adrian Paul into it. The for me, the the biggest entertainment value from four comes from uh, Bruce Payne as the villain. Yeah. Which I like that kind of villain. If you're going to have a movie that's really not very good, you know, a Bruce Payne thrown in there can can make it pretty entertaining. Uh, uh, just really 
God, what are some of his uh, what are some of his lines from that? Like, uh, oh yes, you want to be inside me, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> I would do that, you know, really. <laughs> <laughs> As Moody put it, a really kind of fey villain. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I definitely agree with you on Christopher Lambert, though. He he made the Mortal Kombat movie for me. Yep. <laughs> Entering this tournament of Mortal Kombat. It's really hard to do a Christopher Lambert impression because, I mean, you know, I can kind of do it like the, yes, take my hand. Come on, come on, you know, stuff like that. But it's hard to do a Christopher impression because it's so easy to accidentally do a Peter Laurie impression. Turn it me, Arnold Cabot, you know. <laughs> yeah. well, I just like that laugh that he did, and then he would just apologize for it. That's what made the movie for me, the fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> so, billions. And then walk that. away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, man, that man can make anything entertaining. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what would be your concept for the next Pumpkinhead film? Uh, man. Crap, I don't know. Uh, it's really one of those, like, one-off concepts. I mean, there's really no other way to do a Pumpkinhead movie than the essentially just be remaking the first one again. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe put it on a cruise ship that ends up in Manhattan. <laughs> Set it in space. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, put it in outer space. That's a Set franchise that hasn't <laughs> um, now, Any direct-to-DVD horror films or horror sequels that you like? You know, I did like, uh, fuck, and I always forget the subtitle of this one. Uh, there was a Hellraiser movie that had Dean Winters in it, and they brought back uh, Ashley Lawrence, uh, where Dean Winters was her husband, and then he was kind of getting toyed around with by uh, Pinhead and, and all of the Cenobites, and uh, it was really kind of a Jacob's Ladder type movie. Uh I really liked that. I watched it years ago on, like, I don't know, HBO or Showtime or, or one of them. Uh, I can't, can't remember the subtitle of it, but type in, you know, Hellraiser and Dean Winters and you find it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but that, one, that one I really liked. Awesome. Uh, just while I um, remember, Brad, there's a, a movie that I saw, oh, goodness, about six years ago or something, I can't remember rightly what what it's called. I think it's to do with grandma or something. It's a it's a a really bad exploitation horror film. It's it's really shit, but it's really entertaining in a way. And I thought it's right up your alley. It's I think it's called Grandma. It's a bunch of college kids that get together in a house, and one of them dresses up like a granny and goes around and kills them all. It's it's so bad. It's hysterical. I remember seeing one from like the mid 90s that was called the granny and it had uh, i think stella stevens played uh, the granny in it and shannon weary was in it um and it, it was yeah kind of i remember that like some friends get together in this house but, but i don't know if anyone dressed up like maybe they did it's been 15 years since i've seen it but like shannon weary i think was the caretaker of the granny but mm -hmm. yeah Stella Stevens was like this evil grandma and she was killing these yeah I think they were college students or uh, 20 somethings at least I think, um, that, I think that would just be perfect for the cinema not to rip apart because <laughs> I just thought, yeah. thought oh Jesus Christ <laughs> from, what I, from what I remember about it yeah I think it's about one of the only Shannon Weary movies that would be perfect for the snob the rest of them would be perfect for softly from cable <laughs> 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 uh, moving on, what's your what's your favorite version of Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Oh, the uh, Donald Sutherland one. Um, 
I've actually got that on a big box too. Uh, <laughs> the Donald, the one with Donald Sutherland and Jeff Goldblum. I really like that. I also really like the Abel Ferrara one, the one from the '90s with uh, Meg Tilly. Uh, uh, that one was okay. Uh, yeah, but but yeah, the uh, Donald Sutherland one. That one's that one's my favorite. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, and uh, Hellraiser, you're talking about the subtitle is Hellseeker. Hellseeker, got it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, how did you get introduced to that guy with the glasses? Uh, okay. well, um, uh, I'd watched it the first time that I'd seen. I had watched the site for uh, since um, the first time that I saw the Nostalgia Critic was when he and the Angry Video Game Nerd did their fight. Um, or when they when they uh, challenged each other when they challenged each other and the nerd did Ricky one and the nostalgia critic did Baby's Kids the Super Nintendo game that was the first time that I had seen that I had seen him right when he did that I thought it was really funny I really liked it so I kept watching it um, and then I watched uh, uh, Spoonie's videos and stuff like that and then what happened was uh, it's really like kind of a chain of events I mean I had I had gotten uh, um, I had gotten kicked off of YouTube uh, for the nail gun massacre thing, uh-huh. and then I got it. I was sitting like, "Shit, God, what do I do now?" Um, I think I, I was probably just going to appeal it again because I had done that several times and it always worked. Uh, so I was probably just planning on appealing it again. But uh, I had gotten a uh, an email from Spoonie. Um, so that was oh, that was pretty cool. I was like, oh, holy shit, he watches my show. Um, I got an email from him, and he gave me the advice to just, you know, say fuck it and just start my own site, which is something that I thought about doing for for a little while, but just never, for some reason never really did. Um, so I did that. I took his advice. I I started my own site, and I I certainly wanted to uh, apply for that guy with the glasses, uh, but I needed to get my site built first. I wanted to build my site and also get a bunch of new characters on the site and different shows on the site as well because I couldn't have it just be the cinema snub because you know, that would only get updated about once a week, you know. I needed other things. I needed other things to do. So I created the big box. Uh, I created Kung Tai Ted um, and the Bruno Matai show uh, and got got enough episodes, got a handful of episodes of those put up. Um, and then I just submitted to that guy with the glasses. Um, I didn't really think I was going to get picked up. I was, uh, I was, I was hoping for it. I was crossing my fingers. Um, because I, because, uh, not that I thought that I had a bad show or anything, but you know, I mean, there's a few other, angry critics on there as well so for that reason like i thought you know i might not get picked up but but whatever but but you know i'm not gonna get pissed off i'm not gonna get pissed off or anything i'm not gonna get like you know jealous or some shit like that um but i i ended up getting picked up i was flipping out i was like holy shit that's (laughs) fucking awesome (laughs) so i thought yeah uh uh so that's 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 really how it happened Oh, cool! Mm-hmm. Awesome. I'll throw yeah, a party. Yeah, I, I, got, <laughs> I got, I got, I got up a whole new fan base and and everything. It was, it was, yeah, really cool. I was pretty psyched. I opened up a bottle of wine and and everything. <laughs> Don't blame you. <laughs> I'd be up on the top of my roof screaming to the heavens. Um, made it, ma. Yeah. Made it, ma. <laughs> top of the internet world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the day I get picked up, yo, Adrian, I did it! <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, uh, are there any other films that you consider to be guilty pleasures of yours? That I've watched for the site? Uh, no, just in general, any any films that you consider are guilty pleasures for yourself? Uh, I don't know. I don't really... Because... Given the kind, I mean, my, I don't really consider if I like a movie, I that I like it. I, you know, I don't really consider it to be a guilty pleasure. I mean, my favorite movie is Caligula, so. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, you know, most most movies that I like, I I will gladly admit that I that I liked them, you know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I don't really have many. I mean, there's certainly movies that I've done as the snob that I do person that I do personally like. Because I mean, by this point, I think people are aware that it's just a that I'm not a real cinema snob in real life. <laughs> um, so there, there are movies that I've done as the snob that I that I genuinely like. Like well. Caligula, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, Ricky O, uh, Lady Terminator. I just did uh, New Year's Evil. Mm-hmm. That's a pretty good slasher mm-hmm. movie. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> Zombie 90 was pretty funny, just for that stupid-ass dubbing. Oh, God, that was <laughs> terrible. That was absolutely <laughs> terrible with the dubbing that's... Because you were so right, it just sounded so much like a black guy. <laughs> yeah. I made a hypothesis without even forming an analysis. Dr. Burton, you're a genius! Keep <laughs> <laughs> me going, doctor! To the place where it all started. <laughs> <laughs> Got a nuclear special forces. Special forces? <laughs> <laughs> That move, that was that that shit's just funny. <laughs> uh, whoever whoever put put together that fucking VHS with that dub was is a genius. They actually <laughs> they managed to make an Andreas Schnoss movie watchable. Uh, are there uh, any more obscure eighty slasher films you enjoy? Oh yeah, I I mean I I grew up. Up on those movies. Uh, the sla- when I was a kid, uh, the slasher movies were about my favorite. They were my favorite ones to watch, at least. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, I've 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 always been a big big fan of uh, of those stuff like you know Stage Fright, of course Friday the Thirteenth, Halloween. Uh, um, what are some other? Uh, oh, uh, Slaughter High. That one's that one's one of my favorite slasher movies. Oh, excuse me. Um, but uh, sli- the slasher movies are are a little more difficult to do on the snob. Not that not that it's difficult. Not that it's really difficult. It's just sometimes it's hard getting a lot of material out of them because they have a set formula. You know, they are what they are, and you could make fun of something about a slasher movie on the snob, but it would be the same thing that you could make fun of with really any given one. Like, the easiest ones that are... The ones that are easiest to make fun of on there in terms of slasher movies are the ones that are just, you know, so fucking bad that (laughs) they certainly stand out because of that. Like, fucking Nail Gun Massacre with his damn quips every time he killed somebody. (laughs) Uh, On the old lady reading from the script and you know stuff like that stuff that you know just really stands out like mm-hmm. that um but uh i still genuinely love watching the the uh, the slasher movies the mutilator that was a good 80s slasher movie it was graphic as hell <laughs> <laughs> what's your opinion on night of the comet i haven't seen night of the comet, comet since i was a little kid uh I'd have to watch it again. I I remember liking it when I was a little kid, but I I haven't seen it since. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you were to ask me about <laughs> if you were to ask me about if you were to ask me about the explorers, that I could answer. That movie's awesome. Tilt yeah. the world machine, shoot myself into space. <laughs> yeah. All <laughs> <laughs> uh, right now. Um... What was the inspiration for your production name, Stoned Gremlins? Oh, <laughs> that that came from, uh, I think we were sophomores in high school, uh, me and my buddies, and we would, make, we would make our own short movies, you know, just for us, just for shits and giggles. I mean, we look at them now, and they're terrible, but back then, you know, we thought they were, like, the greatest movies ever made. Um so we would get together, and there'd be no scripts, there'd be no direction, you know. 
we would just do these ad-libbed movies. Uh, and once it got to like the third time we did the, the third or fourth time we did this, uh, we were doing a movie about we're sitting there we're sitting there playing GoldenEye on Nintendo 64, uh, which could tell you how, roughly around what year this was made. Um, <laughs> and uh, um, a buddy goes upstairs, falls down the stairs, breaks his neck, and oh my god, what do we do? Well, we gotta hide the body. You know, of course. <laughs> um, you know, it was it was me, uh, my buddy Dave, who was uh, Max Force and Chief, my buddy Mike, who was uh, Richardson and Game Boys, and my buddy Buford, who was uh, David and Freak Out, and he was Carl Cox and Chief. Um, and uh, anyway, it was the four of us. And once it got to about that that point, we're sort of like, you know, we should probably come up with a um, Come with like a production name or something. We're sitting there trying to think of stuff. We're like, uh, I don't know, house productions. We film all this stuff in our house. <laughs> uh, and, uh, we're thinking like, uh, all right, let me think here. So Mike, uh, my buddy Mike, looked over at Dave's shelf because we were over at Dave's house, and uh, we were over at Max Force's house, and uh, <laughs> Dave is an artist. Uh, and at one point, he made this paper mache stone gremlin, this little gremlin who is clearly, you know, passing the duchy. Um, <laughs> and uh, so Mike looked over and saw that, and he was like, "How about Stone Gremlin Productions?" Like that? Okay, all right, yeah, that that works. Shit. Um, I still have the Stone Gremlin. Uh, sculpture too it's it's i'm looking at it right now it's sitting up on my vhs shelf <laughs> um right right next to my george lazen the action figure <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so so we chose that as the name and it we never got rid of it to this day it's still we just never thought of anything else we didn't really want to think of anything else um so we kept it we just you know, stuck with it, and it's still here. Awesome. <laughs> okay. What are your other favorite movies besides Caligula? Oh, uh, you know, um, the classics, you know, Blue Velvet, Clockwork Orange, uh, Zombie 2, uh, the original Dawn of the... The original Dawn of the Dead's my favorite horror film. Um, Toxic Avenger... Saturday Night Fever, Zardoz, uh, Vice Squad, Honor Majesty Secret Service, uh, Cruising, um, yeah, yeah, those those movies. <laughs> <laughs> just, okay. a, just a few to roll off there. <laughs> yeah, answered the, the question race. really well. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, the Great Race. That's one of my favorites. The Great Race, the Hollywood Nights. <laughs> Uh, next question is, uh, what's the best movie you've seen but haven't reviewed? The best movie I've seen but I haven't reviewed as myself or as the snob? I I would assume it would be just you. Um, I don't know. Uh, I I went to last year. Uh, in terms of 2010, like really damn good movies I saw in 2010 that I didn't get a chance to review on the site. I, I saw Harry Brown with Michael Caine. That was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. That was a really awesome vigilante movie, and I love vigilante movies. Um, that was damn good. I I meant to get around to reviewing that on the site and just never got around to it, but unfortunately. <laughs> um, but I highly recommend that one in terms of movies that came out last year. Okay, now, what's the worst movie you've seen but haven't reviewed? <laughs> uh, I think I reviewed all of the... It, as myself, as myself on the site, in terms of movies that came out last year, I think I reviewed all the really shit ones that I, that I watched. <laughs> <laughs> um, as for the snob, I mean, man, that's a that's an... Endless list right there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Opening up a camera right. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Well, that pretty much answers the next question. Uh, Mike, you could, you got to put the same question on here twice, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to skip ahead to the next question that I have on here. Yeah. Are you an MST3K fan, and if so, what are your favorite episodes? Mr. Science Leader is my, uh, that's my favorite show of all time. Yeah. Um, that's my favorite television show yeah. of all time. Uh, and if, if you, on the show, on my show, uh, there's countless Mystery Science Theater references thrown in there. Um, I was watching, last night I went back and watched the, uh, <laughs> shows you how much there was nothing on TV last night. Um, <laughs> I went back and watched my uh, Dolomite video, and in the Dolomite video, I put in. And this is a joke that he, this is a joke that, like you know, some people will get if they happen to have seen this episode of Mystery Science Theater, where I show where there's a clip in Dolomite of some girls dancing, and I put over a sound clip of the song uh, "Shine Your Love" from the Angels for Revenge episode. Um, <laughs> so big mystery, science, big mystery science theater fans will get that joke. Uh, anyone else will watch it will just think it was part of Dolomite. Um, <laughs> uh, but my favorite episode is Pod People. Uh, Pod People, I uh, um, I, refer I reference Pod People quite a bit. I've, I've, re I've referenced Pod People a handful of times on the on the show. Uh, and someone even wrote down all the different times that I referenced Pod People. Uh so that's my favorite episode. Uh, I love that episode so much that I've got a DVD of uh, Pod People Unrift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's after. Um, under the title of Extra Terrestrial mm -hmm. Visitors. Uh, um, and uh, other than that, uh, uh, other favorite episodes like Red Zone Cuba, um, Mitchell, San Carlos, Packers of Martians, um, Operation Double Double O Seven. Um, I really like that one a lot. Uh, Danger Death Ray, uh, Space Mutiny. Um, oh God, well, what are some others uh, that I I really love? Um, uh, Overdrawn at the Memory Bank. I really like that one a lot. Uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah, yeah, those are uh, those are a handful of my favorites. Oh, there's a there's a brilliant one that's my absolute favorite, along with the movie. I think the movie's just classic. Um, it's the Skydivers episode. I've watched that about twenty times or so. I just think that's hysterical. It's it, it's uh, at a at a skydiving <laughs> club, and just the the lines that they say when they're skydiving is just it's it's absolutely brilliant. It's like the skydiving at one point. It's like, excuse That's me, right. we're filming a James Bond movie over here. It's, it's really yeah, good. yeah. That's the uh, that's the the uh, Coleman Francis one, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's the one. That's uh, my favorite. And the Tony, the great Tony Cardoza. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a cup of coffee. I, and and the wee shorts that they do. do you, is there any favorite shorts from Mr. Science Theater that you? have you love as well as the the full episodes. My my favorite one of the shorts um, is probably uh, the oh man oh fuck I wish I could remember the name of a crap like Uncle Jim's farm. Or <gasps> oh something. Uncle Jim's Dairy <laughs> Farm. Oh that's my Jim's favorite Dairy one. Farm. That's it. That is my that's favorite my one. Favorite well. one. I just saw a finger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, make a nice mint sauce out of them. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, that was my favorite. Were the two fucking city kids who go to their uncle's farm? Nice white food for white white people. <laughs> um, <laughs> that one, that one, I really, I love that one. That one, that one's on the uh, um. um Fuck. Uh, the one, the, the movie with uh, Robert Reed, where it was uh, the most dangerous game, um, or they end up on the island and it's just a rip off of the most dangerous game. Uh, uh, I've, uh, I've got that one. It's uh, the volume one because I've I've got that short on with that film as well as the skydivers and the other ones. So oh, that, that one's yeah. brilliant. And the industrial arts one. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, Mr. Beat Natural, of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, kind of got like track the there. Thing. Just start getting me started. Yeah, kind of went out of tangent. <laughs> bloodlust. That was it. Oh, bloodlust. Yeah. Blood. Bloodlust. Mm -hmm. Um. Uh, but. <laughs> God, I am still tired. I'm forgetting all kinds of things. thing, <laughs> 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 I've only been awake for about a half an hour. <laughs> and now you... Amazing, we've been recording for an hour. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, you were <laughs> <laughs> once, my, once my characters came in and started talking, I just fell asleep. Um, I'm gonna out from them. You tired to get to shut eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Moving on. Moving on to one of your other great series, Brad's. Uh, Brad tries. Now, what is the best and the worst thing you've tried on Brad on Brad tries? The best. Uh, oh, I got to go with the Crystal Pepsi. I mean, Crystal Pepsi was my favorite soda anyway when it came out. So being able to try it again and having it be not bad, you know, I mean, it tasted, obviously it tasted a little flat. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it was flat, but no flatter than it would be if, uh, you know, if it was sitting out for a night, let alone 18 years. <laughs> um, so, yeah, doing the Crystal Pepsi and having it still taste, pretty decent um that was that was cool uh the worst um the worst the oh oh the worst was the uh brussels sprout soda <laughs> uh that's the first and so far only thing i've done on there that i wanted to puke like i was close to puking uh if you it's that was in the uh Br Thanksgiving soda packs. Yeah, um, I remember that one. Huh? You can see me kind of lower my head. You can see me kind of lower my head under the table a little bit. Like I was about, I was gagging. Like, <laughs> it was, it was. I'm gagging even just thinking about it. It's the worst <laughs> I've had. Let's move on then quickly um, to get you from yeah, thinking about that. Let's move on to the next question. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when I wrote this question down, I didn't check the site for a while, but I just checked the site out and this question just contradicts my question now, but apparently beginning today, yeah. Radio Drome is going to be back, re a reboot. Oh, yeah, uh, uh, Radio Drome ended up being revamped, uh, which, which that's cool. Um, how that goes is uh, uh, my, my friend uh, Josh... Josh Hadley, who uh, you might know from, uh, it came from Beyond Midnight, the show on Spoonie's site. Um, okay. He wanted to do a pod. He wanted to do a podcast, um, and wanted to know if I was interested in doing a a podcast, uh, like a weekly podcast with him. I said, yeah, definitely. I mean, I don't know if I could do it every week because some weeks I'm busier than in other weeks. So he asked if. Uh, if he could use the name Radiodrome, and I wasn't really doing anything with it, so I was like, yeah, totally. Uh, so how it goes with Radiodrome, that's a show that I might not have created along with the other shows on the site had I had my website when I created it, because when I, came, when I created Radiodrome, I was only doing the Cinema Snob. I was still on YouTube. YouTube at the time, and I guess I sort of, what after a couple of years of just being in character, you know, as the snob, I guess I wanted there to be some show, you know, like a podcast where I could be myself on it and not in character, uh, so I did that, and shortly after making Radio Jerome is when the stuff with Nail Gun Massacre happened, and then I focused all my attention on the site and creating other shows, and I just sort of forgot about Radio Jerome. Uh, you know, we it, it was just it wasn't that I didn't like it. I did like it. I did like doing it. It was fun to do. I just forgot about it. You know, it just I was just so focused on these other shows, and now with me and Josh doing me, Josh and, and Jared. Um, and Jared will be on it 
every once in a while, like whenever his Warcraft schedule permits him to have any free time. Um, <laughs> so uh, now with this, you know, that's that's cool because it, it's getting a lot more. It's going to get a lot more people listening with it being you know, on the site and also the fact that it's on uh, an FM station. Uh, so, so, so that'll, that, that'll be really cool. And uh, um, Josh is a fun cat to talk to, too. Uh, so with Josh on there, uh, we have some great discussions on exploitation movies, horror movies, movies of the VHS era. Mm -hmm. Um <clears throat> So there's a lot of great discussions on, on that too. Uh, it's it's it, the conversation flows very nicely on it, and it's uh, it it should be it should be a lot of fun. And and for the episodes uh, that I that I unfortunately won't be able to be on, uh, he's got Forty uh, Second Street Pete uh, covering for me. So so that's that's pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. You can't really do a podcast with two people. It's that's why we got three of us in our podcast. It's kind of we got chemistry going on. Yeah, yeah. Plus, mm -hmm. you can't get me to shut up most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, a next question: uh, Do you have any favorite soundtracks or musical scores? And, and this isn't just for movies, but from like TV shows, video games, uh, cartoons, etc. Oh man, the soundtrack for Hooker with a Heart of Gold. <laughs> no question. <laughs> Pick up that soundtrack on quad vinyl. <laughs> um, uh, the, uh, soundtracks for um, movie. Oh man, I love the Saturday Night Fever soundtrack. Uh, Saturday Night Fever soundtrack, the Boogie Nights soundtrack. Uh, um, yeah, those are fucking great. Uh, yeah, I really like those a lot. Uh, the uh, American Graffiti soundtrack, I fucking love that. Um, as for television shows, uh, Miami Vice. Definitely oh, yeah. Not a question. Yeah, mm -hmm. Miami Vice. <laughs> awesome. Get some fucking Glenn Fry up in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Are there any recent movie trailers that have come out that just make you say, I have to see this? Oh shit! Yeah, fucking Drive Angry 3D. You got Crazy Nick Cage, um, shot in 3D. Uh, satanic cults, 70s car chases. William Fichtner is like the devil's right hand man. Oh, I'm really looking forward to that. <laughs> Brilliant. <clears throat> uh, now, what kind of advice would you give to young reviewers or up and coming reviewers? I would say, you know, stick, if you really like doing it, then stick with it, you know. It just focus on that. Focus on, like, it, you know, really loving what you're doing. Because I didn't um, get a huge fan base until probably about three episodes. About three episodes, I wish. Uh, <laughs> until about, three, about uh, three years in. Like, I was doing it for about three years before... Before, you know, I, I got, like, a very, you know, um, decent-sized fan base. Mm -hmm. uh, but I kept doing it all those years because I really loved doing it. Uh, because, you know, it really was just a fun hobby for me to do the snob. And uh, on YouTube, you know, uh, you know uh, enough people really, really liked it and really, you know, followed along with it and everything. So just, you know, definitely really have a love for what you're doing despite whatever the number of people are watching it. Um, also, certainly pick a topic that, you, you know, you know what you're talking about, like something that you have an interest in, something that uh, that you have a good encyclopedic knowledge of you know in my case exploitation exploitation horror it's it's my thing you know mm -hmm. um you know definitely don't pick something that you don't really know anything about you know otherwise it'll probably blow up in your face like the irate gamer or something like that <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, you know, try to be fairly original, too. Uh, you know, don't just do the same show as uh, um, the angry video game nerd or the nostalgia critic or stuff like that. No. Um, and if you do, then certainly put your own spin on it. Uh, I mean, I was lucky enough to start my show really at the start of the whole angry critic thing. Um, but if you're going to do something like that now, certainly put your own little spin on it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is your favorite form of exploitation, like Nazi exploitation, black exploitation? What is your favorite? Um, I'll say the sleaziest is probably Nazi exploitation. Um, <laughs> the most the most boring is non exploitation. Uh, I really like uh, I really like the uh, like the city sleaze flicks, you know, like the dark, gritty New York City, Los Angeles nighttime sleaze movies like Vice Squad. Uh, like, like Vice Squad or The Exterminator or Savage Streets. Uh, that's why I did that movie I did called uh, Midnight Heat because I really love the, the early 80s sleaze flicks. Uh, like uh, Hardcore with George C. Scott is another one. Uh, you know, I, I love those fucking gutter, gritty-ass uh, city movies like that. <clears throat> Speaking of Midnight Heat, is that online to watch or is it just a trailer? No, well it was at one point. It was at one well the yeah, the trailers the trailers up. The reason why Midnight Heat isn't on the website, uh, which is a shame because honestly, of the movies I've done, Midnight Heat's my favorite hit. Uh Midnight Heat's my favorite one out of all the movies that I've all well, five I guess now with Poker with a Heart of Gold. Um Midnight Heat Midnight Heat might always be my favorite. Uh, the reason why it's not on the website, it was on YouTube for a time. It's not anymore. But uh, So some people have seen it. Um, the reason why it's not is because it doesn't... I need to get help with it because when it transfers online, the audio of the soundtrack gets a little higher than it should be. Uh, it's still watchable. It doesn't get to the point of, like, Black Devil Doll from Hell or uh, Tales from the Kawa Dead Zone where it just completely drowns out everything and you can't hear anything. It never gets to that point. You can still hear what's going on just fine, but it's certainly noticeable, and I know if I put it on the site... That's all anyone is going to talk about. Um, so I certainly need some help with that. Uh, maybe try to mess with the levels a little bit or something. I don't know. Uh, if I put it up as is, I'm certainly going to have to put a disclaimer on there that says, like, look, I know the soundtrack is a little hotter than it needs to be. Um, but like I said, it, it never gets to the point of a Chester novel Turner movie, but just enough to where it, it is noticeable. Okay. I just I was I, I was wanting to see that ever since I saw the trailer. I was like, I gotta watch this. Oh yeah, and, and you know, um <laughs> the soundtrack really is probably the best part of the movie. Maybe I should put it up as it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Uh, the movies you use for the Cinema Snob are obviously in English. Do you ever get videos without English, just for yourself? Well, I've done some movies that aren't in English, uh, <laughs> that have subtitles. Um, um, uh, let's see, the violent shit movies ha uh, were in German uh, and with subtitles. Uh, Salo, I did that. Uh, there's been a there's been a couple others I've done that uh, are uh, just with subtitles. 
I forget which ones. Was Sinful Nuns of St. Valentine? Was that one? Was uh, fuck, I can't remember. Uh, fucking <laughs> boring ass nunsploitation movie. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, oh, no, I think I think that one was I think that one was dubbed. I think yeah, it was it was I think. Uh, um, but anyway, uh, so I have no problem doing stuff in in a foreign language with as long as it's got subtitles. I wouldn't do one that's just in a foreign language with no subtitles. I'd have a hard time doing that. Uh, and I've done it before, but it was early into the series where I wasn't where the videos were very short and I wasn't really breaking down the vid movies as hardcore as I do now. The second episode I did was on Porno Holocaust and that copy I had was in Italian with no subtitles. And I, I did an episode on it, but it was only like a five minute episode. I mean, it was certainly nothing compared to what I do now. Uh, it'd be much harder to do that now. Uh, uh, also Sallow. Uh, a sallow that was that didn't have any subtitles. I put in comedic subtitles, so I certainly worked around it. Um, but also, sallow that review was written differently than the other reviews were written. Uh, is sallow uh, was uh, the snob liked it, even though it was so gross it made him sick. <laughs> uh, so that was that was a different episode. That was. That was a different kind of episode, so the writing process on that was a lot different. Uh, so that that I, I had I really had no problem doing something without subtitles. But any more, or if I was to do that, uh, I'd have to really man, it'd be it'd be difficult. Uh, but. I, I'd certainly have to really incorporate that into the review. That <laughs> 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 it's got no subtitles. Yeah. What is your favorite part of doing reviews? Uh, let's see. Uh, my favorite, I don't know, probably watching the movie and taking notes. Uh, that can be, well, sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are movies, you know... There are movies that there are movies I do on there that I like, and I'm just t taking notes and blah 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 and all that, you know, whatever. And then there's others where the, there are other movies that just give me nothing, you like give me nothing to work with, like Stewardess's 3D, just a freaking sex reel. Um, <laughs> God, it's amazing. I actually churned an episode out of that. Uh, but, uh, yes, something like that that would give me nothing. Like, But, you know, there are movies that I sit there and watch, and I'm, uh, I'm just, I'm not, you know, sometimes, like, a movie can be really bad, but it doesn't really have an effect on me because I am sitting there taking notes. I am sitting there watching it just, you know, for, just to look for jokes, just to look for jokes and take notes and stuff like that. So it's not like... I'm taking it in as if I was just sitting there just to watch the movie. Mm -hmm. But there are other movies, though, where uh, that are are so bad. Like, the worst ones are the ones that, other than the ones that just give me nothing to work with. But some of them can give me stuff to, plenty of stuff to work with, but are so stupid that I actually feel embarrassed that I'm watching it. <laughs> like, you know, there are others. There are others that are just plain bad, like the violent shit movies and, mm -hmm. and you know, stuff like that. They're like, good lord, man, this is a piece of shit. <laughs> then there are others that I just that I just feel embarrassed, like Chatterbox. Uh, <laughs> like Chatterbox, where about five minutes in, I'm sitting there like, and that movie gave me enough stuff to work with. Uh, it certainly did. Uh, but I'm just sitting there like, my face leaned on the palm of my hand like five minutes in like this is the fucking stupidest fucking movie I've seen in my entire life <laughs> holy crap this is oh man I, how much more is left of this 80 minutes dear god like I just feel embarrassed that I'm watching it it's so stupid it's so stupid and not funny and the jokes are terrible another one like that was uh the Superman, the 1975 musical. <laughs> I love that. Again. <laughs> I, it's retarded. Oh, my God. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, again, certainly a movie that gave me a lot of stuff to work with, but I that I just feel my IQ dropping every minute that it's on. <laughs> Uh, now, how do you decide what film you're going to do next? Is there a, a story behind it, or is it all just completely random? Well, when I first started the show, I was just picking stuff for my own collection. Um, you know, like Porno Holocaust, uh, Satan's Children, Unhinged, Zombie 4, Blood Freak, uh, you know, Burial Ground, stuff, Alucarda, uh, stuff like that. I, I, would just, I would just pick just stuff for my own personal collection. And then once my collection got stolen and stuff like that, I just started seeking out more stuff. Uh, nowadays, I really play it by ear. Uh, I have a list of stuff that if, that I do want to get to, but they're not in order or anything. Like, really, I sort of decide a week prior to doing the episode what movie I'm going to do, but movie I feel like I'm in the mood to review. If I if I need to give myself a break, then I do uh, a porn episode, because <laughs> the porn ones are the easiest ones to write for. Um, yeah. If I feel like I need to give myself like kind of a break, that's when I do a porno spoof, uh, because the porno spoofs, I tend to uh, fast forward the porn scenes, because... <laughs> Nothing really happens in them. It's it's not like I can show anything from them, you know. So I tend to, if, if something really outrageous happens in them, I'll see it as I'm fasting forward at it. But uh, yeah, I I tend to just skip through the porn sequences, which makes the movies really quick to watch and take notes for, and the the writing process is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, uh, that's that's why I, I, I do, like, porno spoofs from time to time. Other than that, yeah, like I said, I, I have a list of stuff to do, and any more, I tend to look for more outrageous stuff than I, than I used to. Um, uh, you know, I used to kind of do... Just, you know, whatever just came to my mind. Like, so, like, oh, I'll do Las Vegas bloodbath today or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, just stuff off the top of my head. I'll do Curse of the Cannibal Confederates. Nowadays, and especially, especially very recently, I'm starting to look for more movies with a more outrageous plot line, like The Geek, the Sasquatch porn. <laughs> yeah. Um, or Chatterbox or... Weasels rip my flesh. Um, you know, I, I anymore. I'm tending to look for just what's the most outrageous stuff I can find. Uh, but, uh, um, uh, but again, you know, sometimes I'll throw in something like you know, Mears Evil or Silent Night, Deadly Night Two. That's not really that outrageous, but you know, it's timely with the holidays and everything. Mm -hmm. and like Home Sweet. Home Sweet Home, you know, the Thanksgiving slasher movie. There's no way I would have done that movie had it not taken place on Thanksgiving. Uh, and, you know, Thanksgiving was... I, I did that episode, like, right before Thanksgiving. Uh, you know, the movie's just a standard slasher movie, and it's really kind of dull. I mean, there, there's no way I would have done that movie had it not been for the whole Thanksgiving thing. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I, I do do hol holiday centric movies as well but yeah like i said like i said i just i play it by ear um you know uh i i pretty much decide like i said a week prior what i'm gonna do i'll look at my list and be like okay i wanted to do that one okay do. okay uh how long does it take to edit a cinema snap episode uh the process of editing it uh, actually editing it all together, uh, a few hours, three, four hours maybe, something like that, uh, about about three hours. Uh, after that, I have to render it, render it into a video file, mm -hmm. and then convert it to, then convert it to Flash, and then upload it on the 
clip. I mean, that that is time consuming as well. That 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 can add like a couple hours onto it. So the whole process in and of itself, from starting to edit to getting it put on the site, is probably about five hours. Um, but actually sitting there, editing it, piecing everything together, it, average two and a half, three hours. <clears throat> That ain't too bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's not bad. It, um, <laughs> that's certainly my work for the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wish I could do my editing all in a day. Yeah. yeah. It yeah weeks. People take longer, uh, but I mean, you know, a lot of the other guy, a lot of the other guys, uh, you know, like like Doug and Spoonie, they take they their editing process is a lot longer than mine. Um, you know, Doug's Doug's videos. Doug's videos tend to be a, a little bit longer than mine, and so do Spoonies. Like you know, they they tend to go like more about a half an hour or so. Where mine, the average length is about maybe sixteen or seventeen minutes. Um, and also, they they incorporate a lot more effects into their into their reviews. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas me, uh, I I uh, I don't I don't really I don't put a lot of effects work into it and stuff like that. Uh, not that I don't like stuff like that. I think it's very very funny when when Doug does that and when when the other guys do that. Uh, in my particular case. I just don't know how to do it. <laughs> and not, not, not that I would anyway. And not that I necessarily would anyway. I mean, I really like the kind of set formula that I have where, you know, it's very, where it's just me sitting there making jokes about the movie. Um, and every once in a while I'll do something special, like when the snob fought Kung Tai Ted or the whole thing with the Sasquatch costume and the geek review uh, and like video violence Two, where the snob of the past called the snob of the present, you know, every once in a while I'll do special like that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, my, my editing process is, is I, 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 I get, I, it, it's easier for me to get mine done in a day. Cause like I said, my videos aren't quite as, as long and there's not really any effects involved in it or anything. Okie doke. Okay. Right, how did you come up with the names for your characters? Uh, uh I don't the, the snob, it just sort of came to me off the top of my head. Um and uh Vic um well, the Vic character himself was mod- at first modeled after Vince Offer uh, from the ShamWow commercials, because uh, <laughs> the Vic voice is not exactly a Vince impression, but it's it's like a Vince impression crossed with like Bugs Bunny, <laughs> um, yeah. and you know it, it's just a blend of different voices. Uh, so I was thinking, like, all right, what do I name this character? Well, there's Vince Offer. How about Vic uh, Delio? Yeah, all right, that works. Um, <laughs> Kung Tai Ted, uh, that was sort of like a brainstorming session. You know, it was like, all right, something Ted, I guess, will work. Tai Kung Ted. No, I don't want to do that. Uh all right, Kung Tai Ted, that works. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's uh, an 80s Dan again. That just is something that, like, an 80s guy or an 80s Dan. Okay, that works. Just, you know, that was one that just top my head. <laughs> All right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, now, who is your favorite contributor from that guy with the glasses that you personally watch? And do you have a favorite overall episode on the site? Um, I try to watch as much as I can because uh, they're all my they're all my friends, you know. Uh, uh, they're just some of the greatest guys in the world to hang out with. Uh, we all get along great and just shoot the shit, and I, I love it whenever we can all get together. Uh, it's 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 always a lot of fun. Um, you know, I I uh, sometimes it 
it takes me a while to catch up on certain episodes. I try to watch as much as I can. Uh, you know, uh, Spoonies, Dugs, Lupas, um, Thalases, uh, um, Linkaras, you know. I, uh, I, I try to watch as, as much as I can. Uh, but like I said, given that I, I work like every day, sometimes I, <laughs> I, sometimes I fall back and I, I need to take like a weekend and get caught up on, on the stuff. Uh, uh, you know, I love, uh, I love Obscurus Lupus stuff. Uh, I love seeing what she does because she does more recent sort of movies that sort of, uh, cheesy horror movies. Uh, so it's it's really cool seeing someone you know who's very funny mm-hmm. and very witty uh, do stuff like you know Shark Attack Three that unfortunately is made after my cutoff point, which is 1995, so I never get to Shark Attack Three. But her video on it is 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 great, uh, and uh, you know seeing you know Phalus do the the modern day terrible horror movies. You know, I really like a lot. Um, and uh, uh, um, also Spoonie with the Red Brown movies, I love. I You know what, my favorite, and this is weird, my favorite, uh, one of my favorites at least, off the top of my head, I really loved the video log that Spoonie and his brother did on Transformers 2. It was 80 minutes long, and it's it's insanely entertaining and funny watching them just tear apart brick by retarded fucking brick <laughs> that is genius it is i mean they it couldn't it that video could not have been better if they scripted it if they mm-hmm. scripted it it's it would yeah it still would have been funny but just the the hatred of of them just ad libbing this review and going after it and just all the things they were saying it was in, it was just funny and genuine and genuine and just off the cuff mm-hmm. um and then at the end when they're picking out other bad movies that they have on DVD and deciding which it, which they would rather watch you know uh, Battlefield Earth or Transformers 2, Aragon or Transformers 2, Manos <laughs> or, you know, stuff, stuff like that. It's, it's very, very, very funny. It's the best video log movie review I've ever seen. Sweet. have to agree with you. Uh, uh, just to let you guys know that we do have 10 minutes left, so we got 21 questions left. What's uh, I think we should probably cut that down because. Yeah, I was thinking about that because we got 21 questions left in it. We can't really fit it in 10 minutes because I got to. Yeah, and no offense to you, Brad. Uh, all your answers are great, but they're really, really long. long. <laughs> I know. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> Nothing wrong My with bad. the answers. They've only been really, they've been really great, but. <laughs> it's been lengthy. I was like. Oh. Can we finish this in time? <laughs> uh, that's why Mike's been saying anything. I was just waiting yeah. for the. I was waiting for you to end. I was like, can I just get my word out? Uh, so yeah, you got up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how I answer. Yep. You guys, yep, well, good. that and a lot of the questions involve a story. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you guys want to go through the questions and uh, just. Ask the ones you want to ask. I think we should just pick out, like, one more question each. Like, pick out our favorite question and just ask him one more question. Yeah, exactly. That sounds good. Because we are. Yeah, that sounds we good. Are like, yeah, we'll do that. Just one, three more questions, that's it. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, I've got mine. I've already got mine. So I'll just ask mine first while you two choose what you're going to do. All right. Uh, Brad, where do you see the cinema snob in the next two years? Like, how do you picture it in the next two years? Um, going good. Is that a short enough answer? <laughs> <laughs> short as it can get. <laughs> no, no. In, in all due seriousness, uh, uh, as long as people are, I, I still love doing it. As long as people are still watching, you know, as long as people still like it, I'll keep doing it. 
Okay, uh, I got mine already. This is the one I thought of. Uh, you you like Tron Legacy? You said it was like one of the best movies of 2010. It was one of my favorite movies of 2010. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the reason I bring this up is they're making a porn spoof of it. Oh, they better. They are. They make it's called. It's gonna be called Tron Legacy. Nice. Okay, that, that'd be, I can dig it. <laughs> that's what I, I was like, I think Brad will be digging into that when that comes out. Yeah, I'll be <laughs> reviewing that on the site. <laughs> awesome. Why not just call it the dude? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, I've got my question, uh, Brad. Now, what sort of new talent would you love to see become part of uh, the That Guy with the Glasses family? Mm. Um, let me think. Uh, there are some YouTube people that I'm a, a big fan of. Uh, Marshall Horror, I like him a lot. He does a show called Critiquing the Critics, uh, where he just reviews other reviewers. Uh, and he also does video log reviews and stuff like that. I really like him. Uh, he's a he's a cool guy. Uh, and he gave me a good review, too. <laughs> um, the re the reckless eating guys I'm a big fan of um, on YouTube uh, rec the guys who do reckless eating their videos are very well done are very very well done and they're very funny they play off each other very well um, so yeah I, I watch I watch those guys uh, um phew. Other than that, um, off the top of my head, uh, like I said, anymore I, I don't have time to watch a lot of stuff. And well, and when I do, it's it, me just with like a backlog of stuff that I that I got to get caught up on. Like I, mm -mm, uh, excuse me, um, like the other day, I finally saw, I finally watched uh, Doug's Rover Dangerfield video. Oh <laughs> 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 so, yeah, I had to get I had to get all caught up. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of uh, of those guys. All right, well, that is it for this interview with the one and only Brad Fucking Jones. <laughs> I don't think Thank that's you. his middle name, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no, we'll it make is. it, man. God, I'm just so pumped. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I'm Mike. My fellow host is Chris and Susie, and, and we are saying. Goodbye, and see you in the next episode. Adios, amigos. Not too bad, Brad. Pretty awesome. Sweet. And just to let you know, it is recording now, so we will not have any problems with it like before. Knock on wood. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fucking pain in the ass beforehand for you, especially, Brad, it must have been. Oh, it's not a big deal. <laughs> the same, I've, this, I've done the same thing before. <laughs> Technology sucks sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the uh, that homeless guy that they found who... Uh, Oh, has like yeah. the, I did. I saw the best it, yeah. voice ever. Oh no, you, it's competition for you. I think you have the best <laughs> voice know, right? ever. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing this wrong the whole time. I should have been homeless. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me uh, let me start the pod. Uh, the internet. Hang on, hang on, just a second. Let me go grab a, a glass of water while I'm thinking about it. Yeah, I can, <laughs> go ahead. I get. <laughs> He's gonna have to spike it. <laughs> That's alright. I've got I've got three uh, glasses of uh, soft drinks here. I've got a bottle of Coca Cola yeah, inside me. Everything. Bottle. Oh, I've got everything. Because I, I literally came in, fell in the house at what twenty past three after walking the dogs, and then I just got set up straight away. So I'm like, <gasps> <gasps> I just kind of woke up <laughs> and turned on the computer. Well, it's all right for some. You can just fall out your bed and, oh, I'm going to do a podcast now. There we go. Oh, I'm in my bed. <laughs> oh, well. 
Rub it in. <laughs> I'm late. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Just rub it in there, Chris. <laughs> I've got my pillow, my blanket, my bottle of water sitting on the windowsill next to me. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. You suck. You suck. All right, all right I'm back. Okie dokie, out of chokey. All right. Good. Okay, let me uh, start it off. Hold on a sec. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> you keep that in the, you keep that in the shower? <laughs> yes, I keep my penis in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna ask what you were thinking there. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear penis, I heard something else. No, you didn't. <laughs> it follows me around everywhere I go. It's really annoying. <laughs> <laughs> wow, when you're sick, it makes you a duck. I heard Oh, dear. I'm bad. <laughs> All right. Next question. Take. Um. All right, and that is it. With, uh, okay, that's an, that, I read it. <clears throat> that's it for, <laughs> that's a blooper. <laughs> uh, thank Sweet. You. Starting to lose my voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, good, now bring out Code Tide Ted. <laughs> yes. Maybe we can maybe we can go to Vic Delio instead and let him get his voice back before we go to Kung Tai Ted. Yeah. yeah there's not. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I, no, the the only one the only one that really kind of knocks my voice out is uh, anymore when I do the snob because the snob I have to get like really angry and gravelly. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I have to get like really angry and gravelly with with the other voices. Uh, the big box and Kung Tai Ted. Um, not really, because I just kind of deepen my voice a little bit, so it doesn't. It does. I don't have to like, like get angry and like gravel my voice or anything. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. So. Okay. <laughs> so, do we want to do Kung Tai Ted? Yeah. Okay, Whatever you guys want to do. Just go. Alright, we'll bring out Kung Tai Ted. Let us do Kung Tai Ted. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bad impression of you, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dear. Alright, Mike, are you there? Yeah. You want to bring out Kung Tai Ted? Oh, oh yeah. Since I'm just, I'm just throwing it out. Okay, let me. <laughs> Are there any kung fu movies from? Oh God, uh, that we can use if we were in a fight with someone? I'm just, I'm just picturing '90s the movie coming out and '80s dancing in the trailer for it. <laughs> oh my God, this movie's from the future. <laughs> 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 oh, you need to. It would be an epic movie poster. You need to do yeah. something like that. Oh God! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Alright, I think if, I think if we start naming the podcast, this one should be called '90s the Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we get. All right, moving on. <clears throat> <laughs> I'm as big as your head. <laughs> what is your favorite the big box that you have? I'll put the box trying to get to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> uh, Susie, I think you have the next question, right? No, it's yours. The night of the comet one. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's just me. Sorry. <laughs> right. Uh, right. Mike, I, I think I... it's your question. Uh, I know. I was getting ready to do that. Really? <laughs> 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 uh, 
awkward silence. That's not my fault again. I may have been a little. I may have been a little off on this podcast. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh. <laughs> I feel that we are about 2012. Oh, God. <laughs> Piece of crap. <laughs> About what? About the movie 2012. That was... Uh, oh, oh, yeah. It was my first review that I ever did yeah. on the, the forums, and it was 2012. Very, so fucking very, shit. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I tend to feel the most like that when it's a really, really bad comedy. <laughs> you know, like Chatterbox. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, how... Hey, sorry. <laughs> I'll be back. Hey, Tobin. <laughs> yeah. Woohoo! Okay. And guess, and guess what? It's still recording. <laughs> it's, <okay. laughs> it's all there. <laughs> Five minutes there. Mm-hmm. This is the blooper deal bit. Yeah. Outtakes. Who were your uh, Who were your first two re- interviews? Uh, we had Doug as the first one. Uh, and yeah, instead we just uh, did uh, Mars Girl. Oh, right on. Cool. So, yeah, we, Doug. Doug came before you, and we we told him about about our situation with you, and he's like, "Yeah, I beat you to it." <laughs> 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 It's on. It's on the interview. It's online. You know, it's yeah. It's really funny. It's on blip. It's really hysterical. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I uh, did my snob episode yesterday. So usually the day after, the day after I do a snob video, I kind of take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I'll be well. I'll try to take it easy today. I got the fourth episode of Hooker with a Heart of Gold to. Work on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fun, 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 fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're telling me I gotta edit. Uh, the, yeah. The Mars Girl interview. I gotta interview. This, uh, edit this interview, and then I gotta edit the third episode of the podcast. I got so much to do. You busy, busy, busy. <laughs> All editing. I'm still editing my Wild Wild West review. I've done about about seven minutes of it now. It's about another seven to go. Nice. Wow, it's just in time, too. So, yeah, thank you for everything, Brad. This was awesome. Yeah, of course. Um, and and yeah, I will... I will ever want to have, if, if you ever want to have me back or anything, I'm, just shoot me a message. I'll come back. Yes, oh, please. Yeah, we'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> yeah, no problem. We'll come have, like, a uh, aftermath in- interview sometime in the future. <laughs> Yeah, I can I can answer the rest of the twenty one questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we will get them answered. <laughs> yeah, we'll get those answered. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Yeah, 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 no problem. I mean shoot me any time yeah, any time. Just shoot me a message. Yeah, I'll do that. Uh uh Yeah, I'll I'll uh, like I said I got I got a lot of editing to do, so when I get it done I'll pop a link to you and you can post it on your site. Got it. Will do. Uh, yeah, I gotta go. Me too. I'm gonna go fix some lunch. Go ahead. Uh, see ya. Me too. I'm Slash gonna... breakfast. I'm gonna make my butt wake up then. Let's have some brunch. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go and watch Mr. Science Theater in there. I'm in, I'm in the mood to watch it. Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a thinker. <laughs> 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 hey guys, have, have a yeah. good one. You yeah. too, Brad. <laughs>